Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today live for our seventh episode of Talk Data to Me. Today's topic is Blurred Lives and Your Data. My name is Steve Banda, and I'm the host of today's show. I'm grateful to be joined by Aaron Cockrell, Chief Strategy Officer at Lookout. Welcome, Thanks, Aaron. Steve. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, great to be here. All right, cool. Well, you know, to kick things off, I want to provide a bit of a uh, backdrop for the conversation that we're about to have. Um, I think everyone here can agree that our world has changed dramatically to the point where the relationship between our personal lives and our work lives has really become quite blurred. And, you know, information flows without boundaries or limits as we go about our daily lives, whether you're, you know, managing, you know, our daily lives so you can, you know, regardless of whether you're, you're working or work or managing your personal tasks, I mean, basically shuffling your kids off to school or you yes. know, perhaps you're joining a conference call on a train from the train or meeting friends for lunch. Uh, in any case, data flows everywhere and is truly really the new currency. And for that reason, you know, both business, business information, individual information, uh, we really are gold mines now uh, for cyber criminals. And, yeah. you know, Aaron, what I want to know from you is, you know, what are some of the, the challenges that you see companies are facing in this new world of, you know, say, blurred lives? Um, I think the biggest one that I hear from CISOs that I talk to and CIOs is mostly around where's my data gone? So a bunch of things have happened. Obviously, we've had to adopt SaaS applications. We've had to get our applications and data up into the cloud so they're accessible by people over the internet. We've had to um, change the way we work. As you said, work from home. Um, lots of people were unable to get laptops fast enough for the um, people that are going to work from home. So is my data residing on BYO devices, new devices, mobile devices? So that, that's probably the number one concern that I um, hear from CISOs. Uh, it, where did my data go and how do I track it and make sure that, that it's safe? Um, but I think there's, and, and you know, that presents a pretty big problem. A lot of us have solved it um, using things like VPNs and so on. But there's a there's another aspect to it that um, I hear more from users and and, and uh, maybe uh, less of the CISOs that I talk to, and that's all about how do I enable people to be productive in this new environment? And, and it's really interesting. I. Uh, Steve, before I worked at Lookout, I used to work for a company called Citrix. And when I was working there, um, I was working with Mark Templeton and he introduced me to this concept of time slicing. And what it's about is when you're you know, back, uh, imagine if you're working in a coal mine, for example, you're pretty much concentrating on working in the coal mine most of the time that you're there, other than your breaks and so on. Our lives have completely changed now, even a couple of years ago, when we've got the internet sitting in front of us as a knowledge worker in an office building, you know, there's Facebook and eBay and all sorts of other things to distract you. So you end up slicing your time between personal and work um, environments in, in an IT space. But we were still in offices back then. Today, most of us, or at least myself, for example, are we're working from home. So all of a sudden, the impact of that time slicing between personal and um, work becomes even more, I'd say, exaggerated. Say, for example, um, later, sorry, yesterday, I had plumbers coming into my house. So that interrupted a regular work schedule. That's not something that you would have had if you're working in an office environment. So being able to elegantly swap between a work environment, especially from a computer compute uh, perspective and a, a, corp, a, a personal environment or to walk out to the kitchen and get a coffee but still be able to maintain a Zoom call and that type of thing, it's become more complicated and I think the slices are getting narrower and narrower. So this concept of productivity in this new hybrid um hybrid work environment is an interesting one to study. And I think um, uh, a lot of the more forward thinking CISOs and so on are really starting to grapple with that right now. Yeah, no, it, it is very interesting because I know, you know, I think about just my daily life too, and it's the same exact situation. I know everyone in this call is also feeling, you know, feeling it too. And we become busier and busier, right? So you need to kind of 
from a behavior standpoint, you say, okay, I'm shifting gears. Here I am working. And then I have to change gears and go do that personal task and come back to work and, and not make mistakes along the way, right? And use maybe different devices and applications. So there's all sorts of uh, dynamics at play here. And of course, data flow, you know, as that, that overlay and that primary concern, which kind of brings me to the, my next question. Um, you know, I think you did a, you know, I appreciate you laying that out for, you know, that organization, that CISO level uh, and the challenges there. What if you were, you know, that, that IT security individual, that's their job is, you know, ensure our data is safe at all times. Like what keeps that person up at night? Where, where did my data go? Where, where is it and how am I protecting it? I think is probably the biggest one, like I, I mentioned. The, and, and the ways that uh, the people that I speak to, uh, the sort of more modern approaches of, of addressing this, one of the, the first areas of focus is, and I think Gartner highlight this a lot, most of or many of the attacks that we see today that result in breaches aren't necessarily the result of malware but are frequently the result of misconfiguration, especially of cloud services. I mean, as we adopted SaaS applications um, and, and cloud services in general over the last couple of years, we've had to become experts in literally hundreds of different SaaS applications in order to configure, say, access control policy and authorization, privilege, and so on in all these different apps. So it gets really an environment. So it's pretty complicated and you know most um, mid to large size businesses will have potentially hundreds of different applications that they have to configure access control authorization privilege and so on and so that just is a you know it, the complexity introduces the likelihood of misconfiguration and bad actors are scouting for that all of the time these days so i think um investing in the ability to identify those misconfigurations. So this is the, like, I think Gartner are categorizing it. I, I hate these acronyms, but um, SSPM and CSPM, so um, SAS security uh, config, uh, SSPM, uh, oh my God, I've forgotten one. We've got so many acronyms. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but the, the idea is to protect yourself against mis or analyze your environments for misconfiguration. The, the other one that I see is the adoption of brokering technology to either broker uh, access into these cloud services. So the, the CASB or um, so cloud access security brokers, That's uh, that simplifies the configuration piece so that you can have singular policies for um, generic security problems like say for example you could have a, a generic policy to try and protect um, uh, customer data credit cards any uh, structured data so that you could have a policy across multiple SaaS applications or other cloud services to be able to identify from a dlp perspective if that data is leaving the building so there's some of the um that that's sort of the data side and and keeping things in the cloud oh sorry SAS security posture management and cloud security posture management are those acronyms. Um, the other one is you've got to look at your end users and try and provide the same security services that you used to when they're in the building out when they're connecting from home, quite frankly. the the So think of it as moving your security into the cloud. Um, I mentioned the concept of DLP in the cloud uh, through these things like cloud access security brokers. The other part of it is um, egress or, or connectivity from the end user up to the cloud. We were all protected by a firewall and a um, secure web gateway when we're in the building. That doesn't happen so much at home. So in order to implement the same sort of controls to make sure that your employees are not um, clicking on phishing links and that sort of stuff, um, it's important to leverage some sort of uh, capability out at the endpoint to be able to um, filter the internet. Um, actually, while I'm on that, Steve, a, a lot of our uh, the CISOs that I talk to have actually done that using VPNs as an example. And you know, it's not a bad approach, and it's something that we had to do, especially to rapidly roll out remote access. Um, you know, uh, over the last couple of years. But um, when I mentioned the I think in the security space, we're all familiar with the challenges from a security perspective of VPNs. It's bringing, um, you know, potentially 
unmanaged devices and unknown users into, uh, or, or just you know, authenticated users, but um, into the soft GUI center of our networks, which is dangerous. Um, but it's also, it also represents a challenge from a productivity standpoint that I mentioned with this time slicing thing at the beginning. If you want, if I'm sitting at my desk here and I have to pay the plumbers that came in yesterday and um, I, you know, I've got to PayPal them or whatever, I probably don't want to be using the VPN connectivity on my home computer while I you know, access my own banking infrastructure, or I, I do some sort of PayPal transaction, or I do anything else that's that personal side of this time slicing. So that would mean that I would have to switch off the VPN or maybe jump to another machine, um, but I'd switch off the VPN, then I'd go and do my PayPal transaction or whatever it is and get distracted on, on some other website. And then I would um, jump back into work and I have to jump through the hoops to reconnect into the VPN, which is frequently um, author authentication with two-factor, um, you know, so I've got to find my token and enter the code and all that sort of thing. I think um, making our, uh, the infrastructure that you use for work more elegantly available with more uh, like fast authentication, um, simplified authentication and easy switching between environments is something that can also help security because it means that you don't have the end users turning off your VPN and you don't have um, the end users doing things that could be potentially dangerous and you make them happier and more productive. Yeah, so it sounds, I mean, VPN obviously is, you know, like, yeah, kind of, it obviously has its, its its purpose and its its applications, but it's becoming more of a kind of an outdated technology as these, you know, these newer solutions, zero trust network access become available. So, you know, it's a little bit of a shift there for sure. I mean, I, I guess one question for you, Aaron, too, is, you know, when it comes to our, our endpoints, you know, I have this statistic here, I think I, I share because I obviously, you know, now everyone can use any device they want, but you know, what does this mean to you here? It's, so this, I guess there's two parts to it. Um, one is it's surprising the number of devices, well, the devices that are no longer even managed by the, um, the corporation that are being used to access corporate resources. Like I mentioned, I might walk out to the kitchen and use my iPad instead of using my desktop for Zoom meetings and that sort of thing. Um, so. Because of that, um, both in Android and uh, iOS, as well as the you know the regular PC environment, we see devices out of date. And if you've got devices that are out of date, um, and they're not uh, therefore being patched, they have known vulnerabilities, and they're doing something like connecting into your VPN. That's a, an enormous concern from a um, security standpoint. Because I mean, you know, we talk about the the uh, you know, the the danger of zero days and all that sort of thing. This isn't even zero days. These are devices with known vulnerabilities that can, have already potentially been exploited in the wild and can be used to piggyback into your network, that sort of thing. So out-of-date devices and out-of-date operating systems and the extent to which we remain that way is uh, is troubling to me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it, you know, it's interesting too because I, I feel like for many it probably doesn't feel like it's a major problem to have an outdated you know, version running on your phone because it's your phone, it's in your pocket, your device, you're always so used to using it and it works fine as far as you can see. But to the organization, it presents a risk, but it's that feeling that an individual gets that is, you know, probably makes them feel, and, it, and I have a stat for this too, which I think is interesting, but around their behavior and the, and the, the risks they're, they're more likely to potentially take, feeling that they're, you know, at home and, oh, I can, I can get away with doing, you know, a couple things that may not be uh, approved by the organization, right? And and, and maybe I, I, like I, I don't necessarily know uh, understand that they would de they can get away with things that they wouldn't have done in the office because hey, I'm paying for the internet here. It should not be filtered according to my work um, accepted use policies, for example. So and and that may or may not, depending on what you do on the internet, introduce incremental risk. So yeah, it, 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 you're in a different mindset when you're at home. This is my internet connectivity. This is my PC. This is my environment. I'm safe at home. I don't know, have a business shirt on, but shorts underneath. I don't know how, how people are working from home, but 
it's uh, it's a, you're a more comfortable in doing things that you wouldn't do at the office. So absolutely, that introduces um, you know, considerable more risk to, to most enterprises. So if you compound the fact that um, people are using unmanaged and out of date devices and doing riskier things than they would in the past, um, it's a it's a complicated, shall we say, environment in which to uh, enforce sort of security controls. Oh, very good. I mean, you know, I think you know we're get, we're definitely getting getting to the end of our time here. But I think um, you know, for for the audience, when I think about you know addressing these problems, for me, it it starts with getting that visibility, right? The visibility into what devices are connecting to your network, you know, how your user users are behaving, where your data is flowing. And then at that point, you can start to make the good decisions around, okay, well, what are the security policies to put in place to, to ensure that I'm protected and that our data is secure and that our our employees and, and workers can can function how they have to to, to ensure maximum productivity. Uh, I mean, that's how I kind of summarize it. You think, I, think I'm kind of on, on target there, Aaron? Yep, um, but the, the the one thing that I'd add, and this is sort of evolving as a, a new space right now for uh, security professionals, it's uh, focusing on rapid and easy user authentication and and um, gr better productivity through good usability, uh, and that and that's changed dramatically since you know we moved out of the building and everything's gone into the cloud. So that that's the other one, focusing on productivity securely is something that um, uh, I'm very interested in and something that I think that uh, uh, the audiences, uh, the audience should be watching. Very good. Excellent. Well, you know, with that, Aaron, I want to, you know, really thank you for, for joining us today. I always appreciate your insights. And, you know, I really want to thank everybody on the call uh, for joining us and for continuing to, to come to these LinkedIn in live episodes because we really enjoy them and it's a nice way for us to connect with with you guys uh as our audience so um just a reminder you can click the link in this post you can read about uh more about this in the, in the blog and uh definitely join us again for the next episode of uh talk data to me have a have a great day Cheers. take care bye